Here we are Tuesday. again. It's Tuesday again. <laughs> that just seems like the weeks are shorter. They, it feels shorter. We're kind of like red, white, and blue today. We you are. You got your blues, and I got we're my We're working on July. Mm -hmm. We're coming up. Yeah. <laughs> Memorial Day. I'm, all I'm that. getting ready for my my event, my my club that's coming up. That I can't remember. Red, white, that barbecue. barbecue. I want it to be red, bloom. white, and bloom still. Yep. Sometimes barbecue bloom. Yeah. Blue. It'll all work. Hello to everybody that's out there we've got a couple that are joining us everybody's mm -hmm. coming on in so uh we've got some um fun stuff coming up this week we've actually got lots going on actually in in store sorta mm -hmm. um so we've got tomorrow a couple different things you'll yeah. uh, hang out with us in the morning if you are joining us for um digital digital uh, yeah, like dde what does that stand for again <laughs> digital I don't, I don't remember what dealer hopefully everyone i didn't check the mic mic at you guys i'm assuming it's, it's flying over there yeah, so, so hopefully that 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 means it's a good thing i'm sure somebody would be telling us if if, if they, they couldn't hear so, us yeah hi shirley hi mom yeah hi um, mom hi ann happy birthday hello hello sort of late um, but happy birthday yeah <laughs> absolute so yeah we've uh We've got that in the morning, so we're going to switch and put that back in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, afternoons just seem to somehow creep up on us, and we're running around like crazy people. So mornings, we're going to try that back again and see yeah. see if that works better around here. So yeah. um, 9.30 tomorrow morning, we are going to do May's um, dealer exclusive, which is an adorable chenilled watermelon yes. slice. It is so cute. Um, I nice. love that is one of my favorite packs of theirs. Mm -hmm. The the little hot pads with all the different fruit. Yep. Um, I have the pineapple in my kitchen, mm -hmm. and every time I pull it out, I'm like, that's just so cute. I know. And Hayden <laughs> so, like quadruple checked the seeds on this, and he said he was so funny. He's he like, wanted there to put is. like a little inspected by piece <laughs> in all of the. <laughs> yeah, it was, was pretty so funny. Cute. <laughs> Um, it was very adorable. Connie asked what time? So 9.30 Eastern. Eastern. So, yep, 9.30 yep. a.m. Eastern. We will be stitching that live with all of you that join us in the a.m. Yeah. So um, that'll be tomorrow morning. And then shortly after that, um, at noon, noon here, we will be, again, Eastern. Eastern. Um, we will be doing an a dime. endless lace, lace event with mm -hmm. dime. And that will be, again, a virtual piece. So we'll say hi to everybody, and then we'll turn it over to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love lace. I know. I'm actually wearing my, you are. my jacket because I'm cold, and no one else is. <laughs> so imagine that. <laughs> I'm always cold. Oh, goodness. But, um, yeah. So, Busy uh, day for us tomorrow. Yeah, lots going on. And mm -hmm. so that'll run for an hour-ish, mm -hmm. and um, that'll be going on. So if you've been looking to pick up a couple um, dime items, that'll be a great opportunity. Yeah, and maybe, um, so we have uh, some new people um, starting. Um, maybe, uh, Kathy, do you want to you wanna say hi? Sure. And then so, tomorrow we can get and Tucker. And we can maybe get Tucker to pop on tomorrow yep. so you guys can meet um, officially. Yeah, so if you so, haven't been in the store lately. This is Kathy. This is Kathy. Hi, Kathy. <laughs> so Kathy's been a, a customer here for quite a while, and she's mm -hmm. joined us a um, couple of weeks now, a uh, couple of days a week. So yeah, she's yeah. Um, in here to help us out, and uh, yeah. I think she's been enjoying it so far. Yeah, yeah. organizing. Yeah, lots, of fun. lots yes. of fun. Playing with fabric. She which, is you keeping know, us um, on our toes, making sure we're not making a mess. She's getting us organized. She is. It's so great. We <laughs> love great having job. her here. Yes, so thank you. Yep. <laughs> yes, thank you. So um, that's Kathy, and like, if Tucker's willing, we'll we'll, we'll see, see if she'll, if she'll pop, in, pop in tomorrow, um, so you guys can meet her. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's. Uh, in addition to, of course, Hayden, which yeah. you guys maybe yeah. have met in passing. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, Carolyn has been around for as long as I have. She actually yeah. started like right around a the couple same time. of days before I did, <laughs> literally just before I did. So, um, yeah, if you are... and if you've ordered anything, then Hayden has shipped uh, your stuff or sent you a notification. Hayden so is the shipping god. If you so, haven't yes. met him in person, you probably have had some you've his hands have touched your <laughs> Uh, your he, your he stuff. May have fondled your fabric. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody did. <laughs> this is true. It was probably him. So, um, but yeah. So we are uh, 
we're we're getting a little yeah a little more really filled out excited. in here, and uh, we're excited to get this place a little bit more. Uh, I don't know what keep up. Maybe a little bit smoother so we're not, running, so that we're not all crazy people in here, we and don't feel like we're maybe behind all the time. we can we can uh, yeah. get a few more things on the schedule because that is always the fun part yeah, of life, right? Absolutely. So um, that is the plan. Anyways. That is the plan. So, yes. And uh, yes, yeah, so thank you for that, Ann. Appreciate the. Mm -hmm. Yep, can hear us. We always. It's good to know things are working. So thank you for that. Um, <laughs> Technology. You just never know. You never know. So um, yeah, but it's it's been uh, it's been a good. It's been a good couple weeks. Couple weeks, yeah. and uh, I'm really we, excited. We've got a lot of things coming up. So of course we're gonna talk about stabilize not sta stabilizer maybe a little tomorrow but yeah. a lot coming up here we've got our stabilizer event mm -hmm. which is what I was trying to say yes it just didn't come it's out a quite lot. right <laughs> <laughs> blah, 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 blah. so stabilizer boot camp stabilizer right. boot camp is coming up um and we are very excited yes um a sorry. lot of you I know we're like bumping everything so sorry um I know I cracked my knee right before <laughs> we went live and everything shifted and so um but that is going to, a lot of you have registered our our little dingers have been dinging yes and uh so we know a lot of you have registered mm -hmm. and uh, and several people already decided to get in on the labu bundle so yep. it is for sale now you can start buying it um we are waiting for two stabilizers to arrive Which and they're supposed be to be here, here the next tomorrow couple of days. yes hopefully tomorrow but you just never know with shipping so um that'll be the the final item mm -hmm. to go in um, the bundle and then we will be ready to actually start sending things out and yes we will what are you gritting at oh I nothing that oh. you just never so my watch <laughs> is trying to be super helpful ah. um, there's there's a car in my driveway there is a car in your driveway yeah Look that's our that. car <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a car sitting there oh. it's a different looking car though than your are you still like oh yeah that's my car so yesterday I tried to get into somebody else's car <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So it's not. I might, the, I might have done that before. And it, oh yeah, that's not my. Right. Cars. It isn't the first time. Uh, at least this time they were they were the two exact same cars and they were parked like there was a, a big truck in between. So I'm like I'm I walk over to the thing and it should just unlock because the key fob is in my right. thing, right? And it's not. And I'm like, okay. So then I look around. I'm like, oh, that's not my license plate. <laughs> <laughs> that, and then I'm car. thinking, I wonder what these people around me must be thinking. <laughs> That's about what I think probably all of us are like, oh my uh -huh. gosh, I wonder who saw that. <laughs> yeah. I, I did open the door of a red Jeep before and the door opened. And the only reason I realized that it wasn't the right Jeep is because the seats were leather. So I was like, and Dave, of course, is like, that's not our car. And I'm like, you uh, might have honey, said you could have said that prior to me opening the door. <laughs> right. <laughs> But yeah, I'm definitely still trying to get. I've, I've gotten the <laughs> honey. Where are you going? I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I don't know. I have zero idea, and I, for the life of me, cannot seem to remember that the truck is black and the car is silver. So um, we walked out the other day, and there was this uh, silver Silverado, which was Dave's old truck, old truck, and it was a 2500. And I'm like, I'm like thinking to myself, I'm so very confused right now. I'm like, what did we what drive? What is my car? <laughs> What am I supposed to be getting into? Yeah, it's it's always a challenge when you get a new car. And, you know, you drove the old one for a long time, and, and yeah. your brain gets very confused. Yes. But. Yeah, it is. Uh, some days it's easier. Some days I are... already have trouble finding my car, like, even when I know what it is. When I when I come out, I'm... Where did I park? Right? I always try to park next to something so I remember it because it's like my brain just completely erases that not, information. I did not know that about oh, you. Oh, I, I, that's, yes. That's it is, kind of cute. It is hysterical. Yeah. I, I, if I don't actually take note of where I am, I will be standing out there. I'll be that person pushing. Setting off the alarm so you can hear it so you know where to go. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because I that's can. That's you? It's totally me. Mm. Yes. Okay. Or I, I have, um, <laughs> I'm, after I got it, tried to get into somebody else's car, I decided I'm just going to pop the trunk. Because then, when the trunk goes up, I'll know for sure it's oh, my car. I, there I am. Yeah, like I'm, like I'm, I'm leaving the grocery store. That's me. <laughs> Put something in there, pretend. <laughs> yeah. <and> walk on. Because <laughs> there so. it is. Yep. Now you all know. I really am. Uh, <laughs> you are blonde. I am totally a blonde. Yes. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I uh, always am just. Nah. There's nothing wrong with being silly blonde. Silly about it's that. It's okay. 
Nothing wrong with it that. It didn't used to be that bad, but lately, I apparently, and my brain is just full. You know, well, we've got lots on our brains. We do. We, we've got lots going on. So I don't know about you, but I am constantly thinking about what I'm supposed to be doing that I'm not doing. Right. So there's lots. There's lots going on in there that <laughs> maybe I should be thinking about something other else <laughs> yeah. while I'm driving or you know, <laughs> random. Yeah, like when you get home and you're like, hmm, how'd I get home? How'd I get here? I don't remember, I don't remember any of that. turning on that road. Mm. Yeah. What, did I take the highway home? <laughs> I don't remember that either. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there have been those days. Gosh, there are lots of those days. Yeah. That Anyways, was, that was a quick drive home. It was it? a quick drive home. <laughs> we have our stabilizer boot camp, which I promise you will so, be way more exciting than me forgetting where my car is. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll still make it fun and interesting and all of that fun stuff because we don't do things dull because that's just not our style. No, something it is will not. go wrong. So that is last Tuesday in May, which mm-hmm. is coming up. I can't believe we're so close to I know. It's just crazy. So that's coming up. And um, we, have we have clubs. clubs. So this Saturday mm-hmm. or the following Wednesday, we, you've got th- those options. And then it's that following Tuesday, which is going to be the stabilizer. Mm-hmm. So um, just in case anybody missed the email or maybe you're not on our email list and you're just tuning in for the first or whatever time, um, the Laboo bag lady, bag person, if you happen to be a gentleman out there, mm-hmm. everybody is welcome. Um, that gives you the opportunity to then be a participant in the bag person special, mm-hmm. which is every month. And you can ask any of our previous bag owners. We have not fallen short on our promises. There has been a bag special every month. It's the last week of the month. You can do that online or in store. So if you're not local, it doesn't matter. You can still partake in those specials. And they are not like stupid little 10% or whatever. They're good sales. Yeah. So um, We even have a tab on our website called um, Labu Bag Specials. And if you go into there, you won't know what the discount is, but you will see what's what is on, on special, special that, that month. month. So um, yep. we do put that stuff in there. Yep. And um, it is a great way for you to see. We have um, brother and baby lock stuff this month. Yep. So it's a much, it's a really good deal. Yeah. So um, anyways, it is the one and only time a year that you can get in on the savings. So you get 12 different discounts, one for each month, plus a fantastic bundle of stabilizers. At a great discount. Mm-hmm. So not only do you get a great bundle, but then you are privy to these special sales for the rest of the year. Yes. Um, and once you become a bag person, you are forever a bag person, but that doesn't mean you can't buy in um, to the special bag mm-hmm. again. So you can still get the discounted um, bundle if you would like to. We highly yeah. recommend it because it's a great buy. It's a great buy, and um, we it's not the same bundle as last year. We've you know changed things up a little bit. So um, you know we try to keep things fresh and different and, yeah. and a little bit interesting. So there's a little freebie in there that um, is a little bit different, but you have mm-hmm. to wait to find out what that is. Yeah, we'll have more um, information coming about. There next will be year. more coming, um, and uh, so anyway, it's going to be fun, and we hope you all join us. Please register. Um, so registration. Is free. Is, is free, um, but it will become important, and we'll talk about that um, next week. Next week, too. Yeah. So let's talk about this week. Yeah. What are we going to do this week? We are going to talk software yes. this week. So we don't talk about it a lot because it is one of those things that... Is it like Bruno? <laughs> we don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> Mostly because I can't stand that song. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that on the radio, and I was like, oh... We really shouldn't talk about Bruno because, <laughs> wow, um, I, I just, I was, it was on Hits 1, hmm. on Serious Hits 1, and I'm like, how did this get here? I was very confused. But let's not talk about Bruno. Let's talk about software. Stable. So, yeah. <laughs> um, that's what I did earlier. Yeah, I meant to say software, software, and my mouth Wait, said stabilizer. stabilizer. Mm-hmm. So, um, software, and today we are going to talk about the Brother and Baby Lock software, so either P.E., number Mm -hmm. fill in the blank um, or palette so if you have one of those softwares those are what we're going to discuss today and um, if you don't have one of those softwares you can see how easy um, things really are Mm -hmm. and she's going to be demonstrating it on uh, version 11 so yep I have 11 on mine which is the current version 
it is very similar um, to 10 and still very similar to 9. I never worked with 8, so I can't really tell you, but my guess is it's not overly difficult. Um, I think between 9 and 10, there was more of a switch um, than between 10 and 11. They put things in, so there's more like a drop down menu on things. So there's less up at the top of the screen now than there used to be. So you have to click on something to get a drop down menu that used to have a lot more buttons. Um, they have a few less buttons, so they've cleaned up the screen. So I think it's mm -hmm. simplified things a little bit so more. So if you have a Luminaire or a Solaris, um, are the new XJs and um, Meridians, are they saving in the new form format or the old format? I believe they're in the new. So new machines, um, if you save a design from your needles. machine and your 10 needles, they save it in a special the new six needles, um, three digit extension, which is not PES. Um, and so if you have something newer, uh, you know, from like the Solaris, the Luminaire and coming out, they have this new file extension. So the only way that you can read that file extension is with the newer Software. software. So if you have 10 and you are perfectly happy with it, or you have nine and you're perfectly happy with it, the only real reason that you would have to move over is if you wanted to be able to if kind of exchange. If you wanted to export something out of your embroidery machine mm -hmm. and be able to import it into, into the your software. software. Because the software, the older software will not import the newer version. It's a new file so extension. So I'm going to tell you what the extensions are. You can ignore anything. me if it doesn't mean anything mm -hmm. to you, okay? So don't, don't let this confuse you. Up until two years ago, three years ago, how many years ago? Three-ish. Three-ish years yeah. ago, all of ours exported in PHC, as in CAT. Recently, they started with the newer top-of-the-line-ish machines also adding in now a PHX as an X-ray. So that new format, you have to have the newer version of palette or PE to import. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yep. So um, other than that, um, and if you don't have any reason to import it, doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Right. So if you are not one of those people that are like, hey, I want to take that design and play with it, <laughs> if that's not anything in your, your dream world, then it's completely an ir irrelevant um, feature for mm -hmm. you. Um, a lot of times we will, we have said, you know, if you have had 10, 11 is not necessarily a relevant upgrade for you if unless you are planning to upgrade your embroidery machine. So it's it's really dependent upon you know what your embroidery machine is, whether it's worthwhile to you. Absolutely. So let's right. get right into it. So um, let's. Add me in here and let's share that there. And boom. Okay, and <laughs> All we're right. gonna make this bigger. We are going to make that Whoa. bigger. So first things first, up here just underneath our stuff at the top, I have my, um, there we go. So there is my PE shortcut. So I double click on that, it looks exactly the same if you have palette, mm -hmm. it literally looks exactly the same. So palette is the baby lock version and PE is the brother version. I have not unchecked this simply so that when I'm teaching somebody, <laughs> I can say this. <laughs> this box will always pop up unless you check this box. <laughs> um, I don't really use this all that often. I do occasionally, but for the most part, I just close it. Um, and I leave it there so that I can show people when they are getting new software. But this is a wizard that is a shortcut screen. You can get this box to pop up even after you have opened the software, but it's a nice shortcut screen if you know exactly what you want to do when you open the software, if you're going to open a design, so on and so forth, those miscellaneous things, you've got some nice shortcuts on that page. Um, this is kind of your workspace. The big white square here in the middle is my hoop that I have personally selected that I want to play in. That white space there is my hoop. So up at the top here, you can see the numbers. And I have six to zero and then zero to six, which if we add that together, of course, is 12 inches. Um, and then down the left-hand side over here, um, I have four to four, which is eight. So this is an eight by 12 hoop. 
embroiderable area space that I can play with. And I can change that to be whatever it is that I want. And it's really easy and to do that. And it's very easy. So let's real quick show you how we can manipulate this space to be whatever we want to work with. If your maximum hoop is six by 10, you of course would not want to have an eight by 12 hoop up on screen. Well, how come? Well, because in this software, when I go to save that, it's going to think that I'm working in an eight by 12 hoop. Hmm. It's kind of a funky little thing about this <laughs> software. That's our quirk. That is the quirk in this software. So it is actually important that you save in the size of the hoop that it, you are actually going to fit in. Yes, the smallest size that the design will fit in. It, it does matter. Size does matter in this one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that really does matter. So first things first, in the upper left-hand corner right over here, um, it says IN, and I'm not sure how big on your screen that you can see that, but that is inches. I can click on that and I can toggle between millimeters and inches. So depending upon how your brain works, you can very easily change that to be whatever floats your boat. I personally struggle a lot with millimeters in my brain and I have to do math in my head and I don't wanna do math in my head. So I leave it on inches. Not that I can't do math in my head, but if I don't have to, why? why? So there you go. If you remember, I had that really pretty flower up on my desktop. So here's that same flower. For some reason, um, if I hover over that, you can see that it says file. For some reason, Brother and Baby Lock decided instead of putting the word file there, they were gonna put a pretty flower there. <laughs> and depending upon what version you are running, whether it be eight, nine, 10, 11, you get a different flower. So that is one thing that will change depending upon what version you are running is the color and shape of that flower but they all function exactly the same. the same. That is your file button, just like in any other program that you're doing. So when I click on the flower, I get a drop down menu of all of those basic file button mm -hmm. things, open, close, print, all of those wonderful things. So I have this wonderful option right here that you can see now highlighted. It says design settings. And if I hover over that, it will tell me what that does. Um, and that's going to give me the page settings for, again, that white space. So I'm going to click on that and I get a box that pops up. So I have a couple different things here that I can select. So first thing that I want to do is select the type of machine that I am stitching on. So the little guy on the right there is a multi-needle machine. If I am stitching on a multi-needle, then I would want to select that and I would get the hoops that are available for a multi-needle. If I'm stitching on a flatbed machine, then I pick the picture that looks like the flatbed. Mm -hmm. So that is what I have there. And then my page size is my hoop. So when I pick that, I get that drop down that has all of those different hoop sizes. If I want to make up a hoop size, I can do that. Mm -hmm. However, unless you have a very specific plan in mind, I highly recommend using one of the hoops that are built in. So, and I do mean very specific plan. <laughs> you have to have like, yeah, I need something that's going to be X by X. And this is my absolute way. This will only work if I do it like this. Otherwise, you're going to pick this and make it work inside of a hoop that you already have. So, or the only other time that might be relevant is perhaps if you were working with a different brand of machine and you have a hoop size that might be slightly different. So mm -hmm. to accommodate your machine, absolutely, you could create your own hoop size if you couldn't find one. Um, that was the, close the, enough that would function for you. It, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good point. Um, so you do have below that, you do have a custom size that you can select in that mm -hmm. instance. So you do have those options there. As I said before, I had the eight by 12 selected. And when I select eight by 12, I do have the ability to rotate it. So if you notice the top of my hoop with that red arrow is pointed to the left, that's because I have the rotate checked. So in a flatbed machine, if you guys picture your hoop, which direction is up? It's the short side of the hoop. So when I rotated that, it rotates to the left, and now I have a horizontal piece. 
I find a lot of the things when I am working in a landscape mm -hmm. tend to be yeah, easier, to work, easier with. to work with when they're horizontal. So if I am working in a rectangular hoop, I would say well more than 50% of the time, probably mm -hmm. at least 75, I'm rotating that because then I'm visually seeing it correctly. Yeah, instead of trying to tilt your head, <laughs> right? We've all I don't, done that. I don't want the neck cramp <laughs> with tilting my head to see right. what, what's going really on. Are those really straight? <laughs> so I can see and center and all of those things, the hoop much, much easier this way. This program does have the ability to do split designs. We are not going to talk about that. This is just basic stuff today, but just so that you are aware, you do have the ability to break down designs and split them. So if you wanted to do a design that was larger than what your largest hoop size is, you could do that in here. Once I have my hoop selected, I click OK, and then it would change whatever size I had there, my white box would change into that field. Mm -hmm. All right, so that is as hard as it is to say, this is the hoop size that I want to use. So how do I put something in the hoop? Because great, I have a blank hoop. Now what do I do? There's two ways. There are a couple different options. So are we going to work on something that is already designed and I want to add or play with it? Mm -hmm. Or do I want to create from scratch? So if I just wanted to create font, so let's go down the list. So you wrote the email to everybody yeah. today. <laughs> what did you tell them we were going to talk about? So um, adding text, um, opening a design, exporting or importing, and exporting, and then file save as. Okay. So as far as it goes to open a design, when you go back to that flower, and that is one place. You also have those same little shortcut keys here. And you do have the ability to say in the program's property management, if you will, mm -hmm. um, what little shortcut keys you want there. Right. Um, but just so that everybody can see it nice and easy, we're going to use these big guys up here. Yep. So right there, I have open. All right. A new page would get rid of whatever I have on screen, but it mm -hmm. would ask me if I wanted to save that first. Yes. Um, but just to clarify, I cannot have two different windows open in the same occurrence of PE or palette. If I want to have two different designs open at the same time, like two separate windows, for the lack of a better, I have to open the, the whole program to, twice, which you can do. But I can't have um, page tabs. one and page right. Mm -hmm. There's no two. There's no multiple tabs in this program. All right. So opening new would get rid of whatever you had on there. Just to throw that in there. All right. So when I click open, it gives me a box just like everybody's does. Mm -hmm. Right. When you open something new, but when I have a drop down. There is no other option other than PES, which means this program in the term of open can only open a PES file. Mm -hmm. And that's the native file. That is because that is the native format mm -hmm. for Brother and Baby Lock. So that is what opening a file means. So I would need to go wherever. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> let's not pull that way because I have no idea what that would be. So let's just grab, um, that's not what I meant to hit either. Um, go, I have no embroidery files here. <laughs> um, let's pull something from the last Bella box. What do you say? Yeah. September, summer. Summer. No? No, winter. Handmade holiday. That one. There we go. So how about a bonus? Really? Okay. Guess not. <laughs> What's this one? Wine bag. Cute. All right, so I get a preview over here when I have a PES file selected, and then I can click open and I don't know what the heck I just clicked. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely no idea what I just clicked. All right. So it will pull in whatever I have selected and open that file. So that is, again, 
open. Right. But you have to open a PES one more time. So it has to be that file extension. And so you brought up a really good point. Because we can only have one tab at a time, so if you wanted to open a second design because you wanted to combine two designs, that is a question that we get asked all, all the, the time. All the time. So what if I wanted to add another design to this? Yes. So maybe I wanted another one of these here. Right. How do I do that? Um, we have to, we can't open. We've right. we've come to the conclusion that we can't open a second right. design. So if I were to try that and I go to open, it would delete what I already have on that white box mm -hmm. and it would open another whatever I have there, mm -hmm. but it would not allow me to create a new file next to that holiday file. Right. So I can, however, all right. Insert. Import. Right. Import is where I can basically do whatever the heck I want to do. That's right. So this is your freebie button, guys. <laughs> this is the free for all I can do however I want to do. And I've got a couple different um, areas where I can do that. I have the button right here in the center of my um, top button bar. And I also have it over here. And most of us will have that there unless we have said I don't want it there and we deleted it. When I click over here, I get a bar based on what I had selected. If I click on import here in the center, so I'm back up in the middle of my home screen up at the top, I can say from file or from the design library, which is over on the side of kind of the ones that came with the program, mm -hmm. for lack of a better description. So from file, it just basically sends me back over to that piece on the right hand side. So if I click here, it's going to send me over here. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. You just have a couple different ways to get there. So when I choose something from over here, I can choose a folder from anywhere. That's where that little manila folder is that I'm hovering over right there. And it says browse. When I click on that, it gives me that basically everything on my computer option. And I can choose from anywhere. So if I go into embroidery and I go back into Kimberbell um, and I go back into my Bella box and back into, do, 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 let's, so you guys can see that bonus embroidery files, PES, let's see what's in there. So lo and behold, they will all show up as a picture here. So I can see these are all of my bonus files. So if I wanted to combine the apron file with something else, I can now take any of these files and add it to the screen because I'm importing instead of opening. Mm -hmm. So I could import to begin with. If I wanted to, I could just bypass the open altogether and mm -hmm. just start with import as well. Yeah. So that's what I do. I don't actually use the open key in right. this program at all. Mm -mm. Um, I just import off the get. Um, and that way I don't ever have, um, I'm always in the same spot. Yes. <laughs> so if I click on one piece, you can see that it highlights over on the right hand side of the screen. And then I could click on import. I could click on it and drag it over here. That would also put it on my screen or I could double click on it. So I have multiple ways of putting it on the screen. They all do exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. None of them will import them in different sizes. Whatever size that was originally saved in, any of those three options will bring it in in that exact size. Yes. All right. So this is a Merry Christmas. It looks like a tag that I happened to click on. I can rotate that design by that little red tab at the top. I do have the ability to resize mm -hmm. by those little black tabs. Now this program is a little different than some of our other programs. We have to tell the computer we want it to resize. save and resize by recalculating stitches. Yeah. We, if we just resize it without telling it we want it to recalculate, 
it will just resize without recalculating. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that we say, hey, I'm resizing and mm -hmm. I want to recalculate. So um, right, right now you have, does it tell you, um, I, I can't see, 8,000? I, I have 8,403 and I'm right down, right above Sarah's name at the bottom there. Yep. You can see my mouse circling that number. So without doing anything special, let's make that design bigger. So I'm just gonna grab and move. And I have made that bigger. Mm -hmm. So if you were looking at the size of that, um, that made it bigger, but it didn't change the stitch count. Right. So I've got a really great friend up here. I'm gonna click undo. Yes. All right, so undo is right here. I'm circling it. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys can see my mouse moving and I'm gonna click undo and it's gonna go back to the original size. So here we are still at 8,403. So also right below that, if you were following along, and I believe you can see that again, right above our name bar there, it says hold down the control key while scaling to maintain density and fill pattern. That basically means hold down the control if you would like to recalculate stitches while resizing. So if I push the control key on my keyboard and now I resize, do you guys see that little zigzaggy thing that's by my, my uh, cursor? That is basically saying, okay, now we're going to play with the stitches. So when I drag that bigger now, I'm at 3.06 inches wide. And if I make it four inches wide, okay, and let go, I'm now at 10,000, again, right above Sarah's name down here, 10,428 stitches. So by holding the control key down, it will recalculate stitches. I actually really like that you have the ability to say I want to or mm -hmm. I don't want to. How many of you guys have bought a design that had just a ton of stitches in it and you were like man i really wish i could take out some of these stitches yeah you can't see me raising my hand you can't <laughs> but we've all done it right? right we've all bought one of those bulletproof designs and we're like wow i really wish i could lighten that up if we shrink that design and then and mess with it we can actually take those yep. stitches out and then resize it back up without recalculating, we've removed stitches. Yep. And so you have the ability to control that here because you can tell it yes or no. Yes, but it is important to remember. <laughs> it is important to remember. You have to tell it that you want it to recalculate your stitches. Otherwise, um, when you- If you think it's recalculating and it didn't. That's right. And just like the, <laughs> the reason that you get the message in your sewing machine that it only goes up so big or so small when it's not recalculating stitches is because keep in mind, you know, you can make your satin stitch that is tiny, right? That can become very large. And our sewing machines are very smart now. If you get a very large satin stitch, it may stitch it out, but it may also think that it's a jump stitch and it just doesn't do anything at all. So these are things that can happen right. when you are not recalculating um, the stitches if you get too big. Absolutely. And you should always remember, just because you can does not mean you should. Right. So just because you can make something happen in your software does not mean that you should do it and it, that it's going to look great when you go to stitch it out. No, that goes back to that old saying, right? There are two types of embroiderers, those who do a test sew and those that wish they did. <laughs> right. So, you know, there is a satin stitch that's going to look good. There's a satin stitch that might look good, but it's going to rip out like the first time somebody wears it mm -hmm. because it's going to get caught on everything because it's too large. Right. Um, or it's just going to be so loose because it was so large, it will fall out on all, all on its own. It Absolutely. doesn't even have to get caught on anything. So that's just one example of why something might not be a great, great idea yes. to resize. Yep. All right. So importing designs you want to choose the browse folder here, and then you can double click. You can drag something in, you can click on it, and then click import. All of those things will allow you, and you can see you can have multiple designs on screen. Mm -hmm. Maybe 
that's not a great idea either because <laughs> that doesn't look so hot, right? But maybe you want to compare two designs or something and see them side mm -hmm. by side or so on and so forth. Or you know that you want to stitch four things in the hoop and it's right. much easier to add them together and then save. So, hey, how do we save as? We said we were going to cover that too. We did. So, first of all, it won't let me save this because why? Because a design is outside of the hoop. It is. So if I have a design that is not in the embroiderable field of the hoop that I have selected, which in this case is 8 by 12, it's going to yell at me. Mm -hmm. It's going to say, uh-uh. So before I save, I would need to make that correction. So I can click on that design and with that little plus sign in there, move that inside my embroiderable field. Now, obviously, I'm not actually going to design and stitch this. No, because you don't think so? That wouldn't really look so <laughs> hot. But to save that, I would go back up to my file, which is my flower, and go down to Save As. If I just click Save, it's going to overwrite something yes, don't that, do that I don't want it to overwrite. And what that means is, the original file would be changed. And I don't want to change any of my original files. I want to create a new one. So that is what Save As does, is I'm saving it as a new file that I get to make up the name for. Yes. So when I click Save As, it says, okay, hey, what do you want to do? So in this case, that original file that I brought in, the holiday baking, would be the one that I would override. And that would be really bad because I would lose then that original file. Yes. So I'm going to change the name and I'm going to say sample just so that I know I want to get rid of it later. All right. It's going to go into wherever I tell it to go. So right now it's going to my PE Design 11 stick, which I don't want it to go. We mm -hmm. don't really want to use our PE stick as a memory stick. No. Nope. Actually, we don't want to use it for that for any reason whatsoever. No. So I'm just going to click on my desktop and I'm just going to throw it on there so I can delete it later because I really don't need this file. But what you want to look at is your name, where it's going to go, mm -hmm. and then what format that you have that in. So this is where we can play with a little bit. And you have the ability to choose from diff different excuse me, versions of the software. If you have an older version machine, mm -hmm it will struggle. Like, it will say, uh-uh, if you put a version 11 file in there. We have run into that in classes where mm -hmm. I've saved a file and not thinking, saved yep. it in, in my whatever version I'm running, and then I go to put it in somebody's machine that came into class and they have a 10 or 15-year-old machine that doesn't recognize it because their machine is too old. Mm -hmm. So which isn't a problem, please don't misunderstand, but that is why you have the ability to save back to older versions is so that you yep. can make sure that your machine will read that file. Right, and this is not a brother baby lock exclusive thing. Oh, Every no. brand no, no, no. of machine has, has had different versions. variations and Absolutely. the same thing happens, um, you know, it, it, it just is one of those things where um, Absolutely. You, you have to just... So they're all PES. It's not that it's not a PES file. It's just a newer versus an older version of mm -hmm. PES. And your machine can't read a new one if you have an, a much older software running in your, right. in your machine. So I would just save it in whatever version I need. Nine tends to be a pretty safe one. Most things that we see coming into classes and whatnot. So a lot of times I will save in version nine mm -hmm. um, and save that. And it says, hey, did you know you were saving that in old format? And I go, yep, yep, I know. Thanks for telling me though. Um, and then it will put it wherever I told it to go. Mm -hmm. If you are using a different formatted machine. So for instance, you have, I don't know, spit one out. What if you have a Bernina? If you have a Bernina, what file format do you need? Um, e Pick one. XP. <laughs> Pick one. I right? need EXP. Okay, so you would need to go back again to your file, which is your mm -hmm. flower, and you would then want to export the file. Yes. So instead of saving, it's kind of like instead of opening, yep. you need to import mm -hmm. something else. You would want to export. I know we're getting there. So when I click on export, you'll notice right away mm -hmm. that my type of files 
now I have all of those different options. Yep. So I can export that as an EXP and there is my sample name that I already used and I can then put that wherever that needs to go. So you have the ability to import other file formats. You have the ability to export in other file formats. Mm -hmm. All of those different things. You also do have the ability, as we discussed right when we started, to import a machine format of PHC and in my case PHX mm -hmm. because I have 11 running. Yes. All right. So that is importing, exporting, opening, save as, all of that jazz. Mm -hmm. All right. So maybe let's delete some of those things off the screen. There you go. How about all of those? <laughs> all right. So let's talk text here for a sec. This text tool is probably one of the most used tools. Mm -hmm. When we click on text, we get a couple different options. This guy here is going to be the most used. It's your basic text, but you do have small fonts, um, monogramming, and then the little bit more decorative larger fonts mm -hmm. as well. The large font, you'll get a cursor when you click on screen. So you have a little cursor right there, and then you get a text box over on the right hand side. So when you text, when you text, when you type text into that box, you will see kind of an outline of it show up in your white field of the screen here. But nothing happens until you hit enter. I do have the ability to do multi-line font. If I hold my control key down, I can hit enter and you can see that the cursor then moved below. If I don't want to do that, of course, when I hit enter, it just becomes font on screen. And I can resize that super easily. When I have a little plus sign in there, I can rearrange and move that around. I'm just gonna make that really big so you guys can see that really, really easily. So up here is all of my font play, choices. My playing power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I really like to do fonts in this software and I do have many to choose from because I have the ability to do two color fonts mm -hmm. super easily in whatever font that um, font style that I have. So if I choose this guy up here and let's just do a thin zigzag, you can see that I have a um, zigzag now. So I have a satin outline around that just by the click of a button. Right. That is hours of work right. in a lot of other forms. Oh my God, a lot of, so much. A lot of work in other programs. And this is a lot of punch. If you are adding something and you just have that little bit of, of mm -hmm. a, an outline around your font, it just makes that pop so fast and easy. I'm gonna make that just a little bit bigger. I would not necessarily stitch all of that because that's huge. Hello. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> All right, but you guys can see that outline there. So that is a little satin stitch that's going to go all the way around. And you can see that I chose zigzag. I have other choices. If I just choose a running stitch, that would just be a thin line. I could choose that to be in green and it would just make that have a nice crisp edge. Mm -hmm. Have you guys ever stitched a font and you're just like, yeah, those edges just look icky. Yeah, They just don't look really crisp. This gives you that crisp edge and it just makes all the difference in the world. This is why I love fonts in my PE programs. Yep. And I have the ability to choose from a whole lot. So everything with a number here is something that came installed on my software. La -di -di, la -di -da. Yeah, there's a little over 100, there's isn't there? There's a lot. So 120 fonts were included when you install the software. Mm -hmm. That means that they were digitized fonts. That means they're gonna stitch out beautifully. Okay, that's what that means in, in really quick language. Yep. All right. Everything that you see with a TT means that's a font that is installed on my computer in my Windows font file. If you know me, y'all know I have a little bit of a font fetish. Maybe if you want to use that terminology. I've got a very large <laughs> yep. font So you file. may not have those same fonts. <laughs> you probably won't have anywhere near this many, um, but I definitely have quite a few. So you can see just by clicking on one, it will automatically change what you see on screen. 
The other thing that I really like about this is you get to see a preview of what all of those things would look like just by scrolling through. So I'm still in the B's. <laughs> there come some C's. Um, but there is just a ton of options that you can add to this. Mm -hmm. So, And you still get that same you option. You still get that option to add in that second color. And again, to do this in any other software, yeah, it is such a pain. <laughs> Because I've tried, <laughs> let me tell you. Yeah, you copy, paste, you make it an outline, you give you an end outline, up and it. now it's now yeah. it's a satin stitch, and, and it's it just doesn't. And then you try to get them to line up, and then you resize, and yep. they don't line up. And this is literally seconds, and it's just so so quick. If I'm going on the inside here, I have a satin stitch. I can change that to a fill stitch. I can change that to a programmable fill stitch. What that means is when I am over here, where is that at? Do, do, do. Is it in sewing attributes? Uh, 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 uh. Do, do, do. Why can't I find it? Shouldn't there be a folder? Yep, there we go. My region. Okay. I seriously thought that's where I was. <laughs> like, why is it not there? So I have chosen programmable fill and I've clicked on my sewing attributes tab here. Inside of my letters, I have chosen programmable fill and I can choose what I want that fill to actually look like. So let's just, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. I choose that and it changes. So again, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to zoom in. You guys can see there the fill stitch actually will have a pattern kind of it's embossed so into it. So you can make so many choices. <laughs> it's just unending. It is. And this font program is absolutely phenomenal. And it's just fun to play with. It just is absolutely tons of fun. Some other things that you can do with font is I can change the direction of my font, which um, you can make it go vertical, which again, to do that in other places is super hard mm -hmm. because um, depending upon the size of your letter, they don't tend to line up well. So to get something that actually um, lines up evenly, so centers everything, mm -hmm. is the key when you're doing a vertical font. Yep. And a lot of programs just won't do that for you. And so you try to do it yourself and then they never line up right. Right. So that little key to just be able to click one and have it be done is just such a great tool to be able to do. Um, some other things that we can do is transform. And I'm gonna zoom back in because now I'm way too far away. Wow, that was far out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that one. All right, so here are some different transforming tools that we can do. We can have that going in different directions. Angles, we can do um, some arcing. We can do all kinds of different shapes, as you can see here. We can have them on a path. You can have all kinds of different things. And again, in all of the different fonts, all of the different shapes, mm -hmm. the options literally are just an unending thing. If you have um, a list of names that you want to do mm -hmm. for um, shirts or something to that effect, there is a name drop option. When you click that, you can enter in a list of names and it would then give you the ability to save all of the different names in that same format. That is the name drop tool that is down here. I don't need that very often, obviously. Um, don't do that for a living, so. <laughs> um, but it is there and it works phenomenally. Um, I can, let's undo this so you guys can see here. We've got line spacing and you've got character spacing. So I can space the letters out farther apart from one another. Um, I can squish them closer together. We can rotate them. But the other things that we can do is that if I click on that little guy here, I can then take and move or rotate just that letter. So if I wanted to move um, like this little guy was falling off or mm -hmm. something. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Echo. <laughs> um, but I can take individual letters and change them. 
and it's just a matter of nothing. You click on the little triangle and that is then the one that you are playing with. I can resize just that guy there. And if that is the piece that I'm working on and I change, um, da, 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 da. I have only that letter that I'm working on that I'm changing. So if you have just a letter selected, that is... So you can mash up your letters. You can just... You could sit here for hours and play with font. Yes. It's so much fun <laughs> because it's just there's always something else that you can do. And to change the, the color of something, all you have to do is color, hit that color tab there. Again, I am only selected on the letter H. I can change just that color. If I wanted to select the whole thing, I have the whole thing selected and I could either change it on the text tab over there or I could change it over here. Um, so again, my text tab at the top, I have the colors here. I also have a color tab over here. Mm -hmm. Again, very simple, but very um, effective. Yes. Very, very fun tools to play with. So what did I miss? Um, we did playing with fonts. We played we did with opening. fonts. We opening, exported. Exported. Saved. Um, saved. Um, I think that is about everything that we covered. I think really quickly though, um, let's, let's, show, let's show the um, how to take something and break it apart. Yes, let's do a break okay. apart. So I'm going to bring in a folder or, or a, a file that um, has a whole bunch of different uh, pieces that um, I kind of played with before we started so I would know where everything was and not um, be too confused. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so these are art quilts. They are kind of um, wall hanging type things, but this is a little bit smaller one. So this one is um, sea turtles. And maybe I just want that sea turtle, mm -hmm. but it, the only sea turtle that I have is in this whole piece. Yeah. But I just want this one sea turtle and I don't want the rest of it, but the only way that I can get it is in this in this whole thing is a nine inch design. Mm -hmm. And you don't wanna have to but, fast forward through all that. But I don't want, my hoop can't take that nine inch design. Right. So I can't just hoop it for that just to get this little guy out. That's right. So let's if, break it apart. Let's break it apart. So when we have that entire thing selected, we have a tab at the top. So again, I imported this design. You could open it. This mm -hmm. happens to be a PES, but it doesn't matter. Um, so you could do either. And now I have this tab across the top. So they know that the whole design is selected because there is I a have these little guys here. black box going around and everything. Every color over here has, has a box around it. It's blue. Yep. So if I click here, there's no boxes mm -hmm. and there's no boxes over here. Right. That means nothing's selected. Yes. So anywhere that I click, it's gonna select everything because it's grouped. Mm -hmm. It's all one file at this point. And if I try to get one, notice I don't get black boxes. I get these little red, Jean calls them marching ants. They're not ants, but mm -mm. they're little moving red lines. So that doesn't give me that particular, that part. particular part because again, it's part of it's the rest of everything else. So what I need to do is I need to pull out the parts that I want and get rid of everything else. Yes. So I need to separate everything. So we first have to So have the first thing I need to do is selected. I need everything selected so I can say separate everything. Yes. So when I select it all, I see boxes here and I see boxes on all of the things on the left. Mm -hmm. And I get this tab across the top that says stitches. So I need to click on stitches and then that gives me some new options. What I want to do is divide my colors apart. Yep. So when I divide the colors, it splits the design. Now you can see I have a whole bunch of lines inside of that. Mm -hmm. That separates all of them. This is where it gets hairy. This is where it starts <laughs> to look like a mess, right? So now when I click off, I have all different things and mm -hmm. I can select individual sections. So now when I click on something, I do get black little boxes, which we call handles. Mm -hmm. 
I could resize something or I could delete them. Mm -hmm. So I've got a couple different things. I could right click and um, hit delete, which is something that you guys can see very well. Um, on my keyboard in front of me, if it has a handle around it, so it has those, I can hit the delete on my keyboard and that will also work. So the only time that doesn't work is like perhaps if you are using this on a Mac, mm. um, if you select and you hit the delete button, it doesn't always work the same way. So just as an FYI, if- In parallels. In parallels or if you're running it on some that. other thing. Yeah, for, for whatever reason, that's the one thing that doesn't always work the same way. So if you are on a, on a Mac computer running this in some sort of a Windows program and that doesn't work, the right click does. <laughs> gotcha. So if I wanted to, if I'm having a hard time selecting something because it's behind the part that I want to keep, mm -hmm. I can come over to my list over here on the left and I can click on it, which then I get those red moving lines mm -hmm. and then I can right click and select that object. And then I get those. The black box. So it yes. just kind of depends on where things are, what your easiest thing to do. And then again, I could click on that and delete. So um, I just need to keep get clicking and deleting all of those individual spots, which this one happens to have a lot. So hang with me. I just need to put my mouse on in um, a thread, basically of that color, and it will go away. Or it will highlight, I guess, for lack of a, there's a lot, <laughs> a whole lot. It's getting there. Do, do. All right, we're getting pretty close. There's something still over here. I can't see it very well, but it's there. That's weird. Must have been an applique. All right, so I pretty much just have turtles. And these are the same color. Mm -hmm. So if I delete a color, now I'm going to delete part of the turtle that I want. And I right. just want this big guy over here. Mm -hmm. So now what do I do? You're going to try to select that individual part, right? Right. So if I select it, it selects the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So now on my stitches tab, I got to find another way to do this. Yeah. So now I want to split up those stitches so that I can only get rid of the... Cut it apart. I want to cut it apart is exactly right. So when we split the stitches, so again, I clicked on the stitches tab. I'm going to point. <laughs> like that's super helpful. You guys can totally see me pointing at my screen, right? I'm going to click on split stitches across the top of the screen way up here. All right. And now my mouse is little scissors, if you guys can see that. And I am just going to click around the guy I want to get rid of. And then I'm going to double click to get rid of the section that I want. Hopefully I did that right. All right, and then that color disappeared from there. Did it disappear from there too? Mm-hmm. Yep, undo. I don't know what I did. So, there we go. No, it didn't. We're good. All right, and then we want to click on a different color and cut again. So basically, all of these colors that are in these turtles, they're in both of the turtles. Double click, and you can see the handles. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna delete and then click again. And I'm just gonna keep going. So split stitches on that color that I have highlighted. Click all the way around. Double click to close that loop. You can see the handles that are right there. Delete that section and then click again. I've got a new color selected, split stitches. Follow my way around that turtle. Double click to close. I think they're starting to see a pattern here. It's, it's just <laughs> rinse and repeat, isn't it? So click, click all the way around. Double click to close and delete. New color. And we just keep going. So the first step is divide your color, 
get rid of all of the colors that are not in what you want. The next step is to split your stitches and remove the sections of the colors that... Not your britches, your stitches. Not your britches. You need to keep your britches on. Come here, little buddy. All right, and then keep going around the section that you don't want. So you need to tell the computer this part I'd want to get rid of. And you just keep going until they're all gone. Is there anything you want to talk about while I finish this off? No, um, but this is the thing that people get, like, they think if they just do it one time, I split the stitches, now I don't need to do it again. How so, many times have I done this? Um, at least five times. <laughs> more, more than that, I think. <laughs> um, but you will want to make sure that um, you go through this until all of the pieces and parts over there are gone. Um, it just takes a few minutes to do, but taking your time doing this is going to get us the end result, which is just that cute little turtle over there. So just take your time and keep doing this. And yeah, sometimes it feels like it's endless, um, but uh, you know, sometimes there's a lot of colors. <laughs> this turtle is very colorful. He is very colorful. That's what makes him look like a real turtle. And then, and look at that. Now, the important part when she's finished with this, right? She wants to make sure that she puts them in the center. She wants to make so sure I'm that. I'm gonna select them all. Now, watch that. See? I'm gonna take that mouse and drag it. Mm -hmm. And now all of my parts are selected so that all of them move together. Right. And now um, we would want to change our hoop size. We would. Before we save this design. So, first of all, let's come back here. At the bottom of the screen, he is 2.9 by 3.4. So, he should now fit in my 4x4 four four hoop. So, I can go to my design settings, go to my 4x4 four four hoop, and I can, which one is center? Control M. Control M. Mm -hmm. And he's now centered on my screen. So when I save him now. And we would want to do a save as. That is super important. And I go turtle. And he's single. <laughs> ready to mingle. <laughs> single and ready to mingle. There he is. And we're going to put him wherever you are saving. Um, it's Again, it's telling me it's in the old format, which, like you I know. said, I am in the habit of doing that. And there we have all of the other stitches. So that started as this guy way over here with all of that excess. And I can pull out whatever it is that I don't want. So when you have something that is grouped, it's not difficult. Yes, there's few steps that are involved, mm -hmm. but it's literally doing the same things over and over and repeating those basic steps. Absolutely. So let's kick me out. Woohoo! We're back. Hello. <laughs> so. Hi, Dad. Yes. Hi, Dad. <laughs> so, um, software is, it doesn't have to be an overwhelming experience. Whatever it is that you want to do, um, we can help you do. We walk people through things over the phone mm -hmm. all the time. Yes. Um, and um, I know Gene is planning on a software class, um, and he's hoping to hold it in store. So. He thinks that's going to be the first in-store class we have. We'll see if we can beat him, but um, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Race to the finish line. That's right. Um, but he is planning a, a software class mm -hmm. um, upcoming this summer. And um, But again, if you guys got your software from us or if you're planning to purchase software and you do get it from us, mm -hmm. we come with it. We yes. are absolutely here for you. So. And I would just like to say um, you need to learn to crawl before you learn to drive. Yes. So learning Absolutely. to do what Lisa just demonstrated for you, opening, inserting, exporting. Start with text. Um, Start with basic shapes. Playing with the text, playing with taking the designs apart. Um, those things will become invaluable to you if to you decide to build 
Mm -hmm. to something new. That's right. If you want to learn to digitize, you need to know how to do this first right. before you go on to the digitizing because part. Because you need to understand how how those pieces are put together mm -hmm. before you start building your own. Yes. Uh, otherwise, it's a, it is very overwhelming. If you just try to dive into deep end, it's just like anything else. You do have to, like she said, learn to walk before you run. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we're, we're here and that's, that's what we do. And obviously you can see we play with the software. So, mm -hmm. um, we hope you enjoyed this and hope that yeah. helps somebody out there um, get through their confusion and uh, make it more fun for you. Yeah. And uh, we will see you guys tomorrow morning and then again tomorrow afternoon and then again on Saturday or Wednesday and then again next Tuesday and mm -hmm. again and again. Again and, and again. Till next time. Mm -hmm. See you guys. Bye. Bye.